Hello, my name is Thomas Grange from Nextano, and I'm going to present this work entitled Atomic Scale Modeling of Interface Reflex Scattering in Quantum Cascade Lasers. This work is a collaboration between the following groups and has been funded by the European Commission within the FET Open project FLUSH. Let me first introduce some background of this work. One of our aim at Nextano is to develop a simulation package for quantum transport in presence of scattering. And this package is called Nexano Energy. This package allows for the simulation of devices involving quantum transport, such as quantum cascade lasers and resonant tunneling diodes. This simulator is based on the non equilibrium Green's function formalism, which allows for an accurate treatment of both quantum transport mechanisms and scattering processes. Indeed, in this formalism, the scattering mechanisms can be described directly from the material and structural properties. And the aim is to be able to predict novel devices, in particular quantum cascade lasers made of novel materials such as silicon germanium. It is well known that interface clarity is crucial in all heterostructure applications. And in particular, in quantum cascade lasers, interface roughness can limit the lifetimes and hence the performance such as current threshold and output power of the laser. So in fact, the basic question is how a real interface deviates from an ideal one. So on the left, we have an ideal interface, which is schematized. And basically, this interface is abrupt and planar. There are two kinds of deviation which can happen. And the first is a roof interface case. So in this case, the interface is still abrupt, but instead of being planar, the interface position varies with the in-plane coordinates. The second limiting case is when the interface is diffuse instead of being abrupt. In the case of a roof interface, the in-plane valence is broken, and this induces elastic scattering between different subbands. On the other hand, in the case of a diffuse interface, the graded alloy profile induces a modification of the wave functions and of the confinement energies. And in this work, the aim is to develop a general approach which captures both the roof and diffuse nature of the interfaces. The outline of this talk is the following. First, I will present a general theory of scattering by roof and diffuse interfaces. Then, I will introduce the simulation of quantum cascade lasers using the formalism of non-equilibrium grid functions. And finally, I will present simulation results in which we apply our general theory of interface roughness, including silicon germanium materials QCL and mid friend QCLs. The description of interface roughness, in the case of an abrupt interface, as represented here, is well established in the literature. Indeed, in this case, there is a well-defined position of the interface, and two quantities are usually defined to characterize their interface properties. If we call H the deviation height, of the interface position with respect to its average position, the root mean square deviation delta can be defined. The second important quantity is the in-plane correlation length, which can be defined from the height deviation correlation function. And a typical form extracted from the, from the experiments is the Gaussian correlation function. The, scatt the scattering rate between two subbands, alpha and beta, can be expressed using the Fermi Golden Rule. Due to energy conservation, as it is indeed an elastic process, the transition energy between the subband alpha and beta has to be transferred to the in plane kinetic energy, as represented here in the energy dispersion of the subbands. If we now look at the matrix element, it involves the probability density of the electrons in the initial and final state at each interface. In the standard approach, each, in, in each interface is indeed assumed to fluctuate independently from another, so there is no correlation between the interfaces. We now look at the general case in which the interface is at the same time rough and diffuse. The rough nature of the interface can be treated by looking at the average alloy profile, and the effect of this graded alloy profile can be treated exactly in the 1D simulation of the eigenstates. And we see here that we have a modification of the wave functions and of the confinement energies. So now the difficult question is how to introduce roughness in the case of a diffuse interface. An earlier approach has been developed by Valavanis and co in which the alloy profile 
for different in-plane coordinates is assumed to be rigidly shift with respect to its average value. Without further experimental input, this is probably the simplest approach and it doesn't require additional parameters as we still need the two following quantities. In the more general case, the alloy profile can have any kind of fluctuation around its average value. And in this case, one needs a third quantity to characterize the interface. So in addition to the two quantities introduced previously, one needs in addition the correlation function along the growth axis. And one of the advantages of this method is that now we can describe layers which are comparable or smaller than the interface width. So from the theoretical point of view, we have a three-dimensional potential, which we can decompose into an average 1D potential, which we can treat exactly. And on the other hand, we have an interface roughness potential, which describes the in-plane fluctuation with respect to the average value. To treat this interface roughness potential, we expand it in first order as a function of the derivative of the, of the potential. And it's worth to point out that the interface position cannot be defined anymore, but instead we have to define the height deviation from the ISO concentration surfaces. From this perturbating potential, we can express the coupling element between two states alpha and beta. And now if we want to look at the sketching rate, we have to consider, as before, the squared matrix element. And in these expressions that we get, we have to define a three-dimensional correlation function. Here, to simplify the problem, we assume that this 3D correlation function can be factorized into a 1D axial correlation function and an in-plane correlation function. So here we need experimental input for this correlation function. And in the case of silicon germanium, we have data from atomic probe tomography, which have been performed in Montreal, in which both axial correlation function and in-plane correlation function have been extracted from the atomic probe tomography data. And it turns out that while the in-plane correlation function can be fitted with a Gaussian function, the axial correlation function is well fitted with a simple exponential decay. And the striking result here is that this axial correlation length is actually smaller than the interface width. So now we can plug in this expression of the correlation function into our expression of the squared matrix element. And as a result, we get the expression of the sketching rate between the subon alpha and beta. And now we can apply this expression to calculate the sketching rate between two states of a QCM. And to understand the role of each correlation length, we have plot here the interface roughness sketching rate as a function of each correlation length. On the left, we have the influence of the in-plane correlation length, which comes from the Gaussian form of the in-plane correlation function. And this curve presents the maximum when the in-plane correlation length matches the invert of the in-plane transferred momentum. On the right, we have the IFR scattering rate as a function of the axial correlation length. And to understand this curve, let's first focus on the region where the axial correlation length is small. In this case, the decay of the correlation function is faster than the variation of the derivatives. And as a consequence, an increase in the correlation length results in an increase of the sketching rate. However, when the axial correlation length becomes comparable or larger than the thickness of the layers, the situation is different. Indeed, interference effects between the different interfaces come into play with a positive or negative contribution that, in general, depends on the particular potential shape and on the considered wave functions. In the QCL state considered here, the interference effect is clearly negative, as we observed 
a decrease of the IFR scattering rate with increasing axial correlation lengths. In the second part of this talk, I will show how we can simulate quantum cascade lasers using the formalism of non-equilibrium Green's functions. So let me first introduce what are the main methods used to simulate QCLs. The simplest one is the rate equation for populations. In this formalism, a semi-classical picture is used to, cal to calculate the sc scattering rates between the eigenstates of the lasers. On the other hand, the density matrix formalism provides a current picture of the transport, but the disadvantage is that dephasing effects are difficult to evaluate within this formalism. The more advanced framework to describe transport in QCL is provided by the non-equilibrium Green's function method. This method, which is a generalization of the density matrix, provides a current description of transport and scattering processes. All scattering processes can be calculated from a microscopic level without the need of phenomenological parameters. And an advantage is that a self-consistent description of burning effects can be done. And finally, electron heating effects can be accounted in a self-consistent way. In the energy formalism, there are two important quantities. The first is provided by the retarded green functions. Its imaginary part provides a spectral function, which is an energy and spatially resolved density of state. On the other hand, the lesser green function is an energy reserved generalization of the density matrix, and it allows to see where the carrier are actually located in terms of energy and position. So here I describe briefly how an energy solver works. So starting from the Hamiltonian, we can separate it into two parts. The first, H0, corresponds to the part of the Hamiltonian which can be solved exactly. And this is injected into our Schrodinger solver. The second part, H scat, corresponds to the part which gives rise to scattering processes, including optical phonons, acoustic phonons, charge impurities, electron electron scattering, interface roughness, as we uh, discuss here, and alloy disorder. And in the NEGF formalism, the scattering processes are, are described in terms of self energies. And the main part of the problem is to solve self-consistently the equations of motion which links the green functions, the self-energy calculations, and the Poisson equation which accounts for the electrostatic effects. And finally, once the self-consistent calculation has converged, current and optical response can be calculated from the green functions. Finally, in the last part, I will show how we can imply this knowledge of interface roughness scattering in QCLs, in particular in silicon germanium terrorized QCL and in mid infrared QCLs. So, first, I will give some results concerning silicon germanium QCLs. Silicon germanium systems are promising candidates for achieving room temperature operation of terrorized lasers, and the primary reason is that there's a weak coupling in the system to opti optical phonons due to the non-polar nature of the system. And on the experimental side, terahertz electroluminescence has been recently observed. In this figure, we show a proposed design for terahertz QCL made of silicon germanium for both assumption of abrupt interfaces and diffuse interfaces. And on the right figure, we show the maximum gain as a function of the interfacial width for both low and room temperatures. And we show that it's possible to compensate for the effect of the grading of the interfaces by changing the design, going here from design A to design B. Next, we look at the influence of the interface roughness on the gain of this QCL. And we have here, on this figure, the maximum, maximum gain as a function of the interface roughness deviation. 
and you will find that even at room temperature, the decrease of maximum gain with the interface roughness is much less severe when considering the effect, the combined effect of the diffuse interface than considering abrupt interfaces. And the reason for this result is a rather small axial correlation length with respect to the interfacial width. As a result, we predict that the interface quality of this silicon germanium system is compatible with lasing at room temperature, provided that the cavity losses are smaller than 25 per invert centimeter. Finally, we look at the influence of interface roughness in mini ferrite crystals. And here we compare on the left the case of abrupt interfaces with on the right the case of an interface width of 0.5 nanometer. And we can see here an animation of the carrier density and the emitted power as a function of the voltage across the QCL. And if we look at the wall plug efficiency as a function of the axial correlation length, we see a minimum for an axial correlation length which is comparable to the typical layer thicknesses. And if we look at the density of state, here for very small axial correlation lengths, the effect of interface roughness catching is minimum, and we have quite narrow states. But if we look here, where we have the maximum of interface roughness scattering, then we see that the states are maximally broadened. In summary, I have presented a general theory of scattering by roof and diffuse interfaces, and I've shown that microscopic modeling of scattering can be included in an accurate way in NGF simulations. And finally, I've shown that the, that the interface properties can have important consequences on the performances of QCLs. For more details about this interface roughness theory and relative experiments, you can see the following paper. And for more details on the NextNano NGF package, please consult this website. And finally, I thank you for your attention.